So, uh, you wanted to hang out sometime? Sure, but it has to be here. W what? My legs don't work. Oh, uh, um, here it works then. Cool. What do you like? Wolves! Oh, anything else? No, just wolves. I, uh, I think I'm gonna go now. All right, see you later. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ladies, when it comes to this game, there are various ways to change your experience while playing and maximize the effectiveness of your character. Of course, most of these lay within yourself, your attributes, spells, weapons, and all that jazz, but if you want to truly make the most of the mechanics available to you in Elden Ring, there is one type of tool that you absolutely cannot sleep on. Spirit Ashes, Spirit Summons, whatever you want to call them, the buddies that you can bring in from the afterlife to help you beat your enemies to the afterlife with them. Some more hardcore players will call these things cheating in a way, saying that you don't deserve to win if you win with a spirit summon, but I say that's bullshit. If you want to avoid them, that's your choice. You don't have to use them, but they are a part of the game, and if you are playing the game, then it's worth knowing how to make the most of them. So, today I'm bringing you a tier list comparing some of the best spirit ashes available in Elden Ring. I won't be talking about any that are straight up bad, so keep in mind that even though I have divided these into tiers, every single one that is on this list already is at least good and can be worth using at different stages in the game. Some are great early, some are just great for specific niche situations, but every one I will be talking about is a high tier spirit ash within Elden Ring. It's worth mentioning from this point on, no matter how I rank them as a whole, their actual effectiveness in-game will depend on your own build and playstyle as well. If you're a big tanky character, then a big tanky spirit summon just won't be as good for you, but if you are a ranged spellcaster, then having a tanky summon can just free you up to do all the damage in the world. I'm trying to rank their general strength, but make sure that you tailor your own experience as required. Without further ado then, let's talk about the Soul Jar of Fortune Ashes, which I put on the D tier. Uh, okay, I know I said none of them were bad, but this one is sort of is, well, bad. I just, I love them so much that I had to talk about them if I'm talking about Spirit Ashes at all. They can do decent damage, but they just sort of run in and then explode and then they're gone. The explosion can hit you, the player, if you're too close. It's just really funny and I love these little guys. On to more serious entries then though, we have the Lone Wolf Ashes in the B tier. This, conversely to its name, summons a pack of wolves. This is a fantastic early game summon that you get when you first get it. it. It takes aggro, it deals decent damage, its only real weakness early on is AoE attacks which wipe out the whole pack in one go. After that we have the spirit jellyfish ashes also in the B tier. This summons a little jellyfish friend to fight alongside you. He applies poison to your enemies which is a great status to be able to do. You can unlock it really early in a playthrough which is great and this summon even has a cute little story moment later on in the game unique to itself. After that comes the warhawk ashes also on the B tier. This one is a pretty good ranged companion. It flies in for hit and run attacks from out of range of melee enemies. It moves fast, deals decent damage. Its only real downside is that it has pretty low HP and that there are simply slightly better summons that do similar things. Once again, it's a great early game buddy to have around though. Then comes the Great Shield Soldier Ashes, starting off our A tier today. And these could easily be moved up a tier depending on how your build is and your opponent that you're against. This is just a group of five immovable tanky walls, essentially. They hold aggro incredibly well, both against groups of enemies and against bosses. They don't really do damage, but they do free you up to do as much damage as you please, especially if you are a longer ranged build. Their main weakness is AoE attacks that hurt multiple enemies at a time, or big enemies that just do a giant tail swipe taking out the whole area. But aside from that, they are just incredibly solid and tanky. Operation Human Shield. After that, we have the Demi-Human Ashes also in the A tier. These guys are a great little group of wandering powerhouses. They have varied weapons and sizes, essentially just a whole party of adventurers from small, fast, and damaging up to a big tanky one with a mace. And their special perk is if you summon them at night, they're actually a noticeable amount stronger, though they also go sort of batshit crazy and just attack everything in sight too. Like the last ones, they are countered heavily by AoE attacks, but otherwise they are great at holding their own in the fight. Then comes Dolores the Sleeping Arrow Puppet, continuing our A tier. This one is a long range utility minion and it fills that utility incredibly well, firing off sleep arrows just non-stop. When you put an enemy to sleep, you get a free critical hit on them, so if you're using a high weapon damage build, this summon just gives you loads of free opportunities for massive damage. Next up is the Crystallian Spirit Ashes, again in the A tier. If you have fought these enemies in the game, then you already know what I'm going to say because the summoned version functions the same way. They are nearly immune to all damage types that aren't strike, and so whenever you summon this spirit to fight a boss that does anything other than strike damage, it will just be insanely tanky. It also draws aggro well, so again, this is just a nice tanky one for specific
specific situations. After that, we have Lutel the Headless, again on the A tier. This one does decent damage, but more notably is a great tank and good at drawing aggro. And its specific extra benefit is that it can sort of teleport around the place occasionally. This does make it lose aggro when it happens, but it also lets it avoid larger area of effect attacks like lava left on the floor, or anything like that, making it much more survivable than some of the other spirits. Then finishing off our A tier, we have Omen Killer Rollo, who is just incredibly solid all around. Decently high health and good at keeping aggro from enemies, he applies the bleed status, which as you all know, is just great. And he attacks quickly with high damage attacks that can flinch lock smaller enemies as well. He's just plain good. Then starting off our S tier today, we have Lutena the Albanaric. This summon will simply stay in the exact spot where you summon it with a powerful bow and snipe your target from a distance for loads of damage. She has pretty low health, so she does take the aggro from you, then she won't be around very long, but because she doesn't move, you can sort of just set her up in a safe place to snipe from a distance and then keep a boss busy far away while she pelts it with arrows. As well, if you do happen to summon her near a direwolf enemy, she will tame and ride it, which does give her the ability to move and making her quite a bit stronger as a result. Though there aren't many direwolves around, in important areas at least, so this is quite a niche bonus. Next up then comes Clean Rot Knight Finley in the S tier. This is one of the few summons in the game that can apply Scarlet Rot to your enemies, which is just a ton of ticking damage over time to take advantage of. And aside from that, he just has good damage in general with ranged and melee attacks mixed together. No real complaints about this one. After that is Stormhawk Dean, again in the S tier, who is actually quite strong. This one will fly around at a safe distance, sometimes engaging in hit and run attacks like the Warhawk that I mentioned earlier. Sometimes it even does ranged attacks instead that will let it stay even safer. And most importantly, it also has a war cry effect it will do occasionally, which buffs all of your weapon damage itself by about 20%, stacking with your other buffs, so if you're a melee weapon user who isn't looking for your summon to take the aggro away from you, this one just gives you more damage as a whole. Then we have Banished Knight Oleg in the S tier. He is relatively tanky, he attacks quite quickly, and draws aggro too. He also does a surprisingly good amount of damage, there just isn't anything really overall unique about him other than that. He's just very good at what he does. Honestly, I'm great at everything. After that, in the S tier, we have the Ancestral Follower Ashes. This one is another one that is quite generally good. It has a bow that it can fire off ranged attacks with that are pretty potent, but if an enemy wanders too close, it can also whip out an axe for close ranged combat. And it is also especially good when fighting groups of enemies as it heals every single time that it kills something, giving it quite a good bit of longevity if you use it for clearing out areas. Next up in the S tier is Red Main Knight Oga. This summon uses a gravity charged great bow, sort of like Radon, which does loads of damage from a distance, and if an enemy gets close, it will take out a sword that it uses with the Lion's Claw Ash of War, which, well, if you've seen it on players, you know is exceptionally strong. A neat trick with this one too is if you use the Warcry Ash of War, any of the equivalent ones with this one summoned, it will fire out a barrage of arrows as a response, only once per summon, but cool and useful nonetheless. Then we move up to the final tier today, the S Plus tier, and we'll start this off with the Mimic tier, Summon. You all know about it at this point, it was ungodly strong in the base game, and it has been nerfed multiple times since the release of the game, in multiple different patches, and yet those nerfs have simply brought it down from being the most undisputed best summon possible in the game to being still incredibly good, but on par with some others. The effectiveness of the Mimic tier entirely does depend on your build, it basically is just a clone of you, but with some lower health. And if you are doing something incredibly strong on its own, this will just make you twice as strong, but it does leave a little bit to be desired in some certain cases. For example, if you are a big tank, then summoning a second tank won't necessarily help you a whole lot. If you are a ranged spellcaster, then summoning a second ranged spellcaster will double your damage potential, but you still have to dodge. It's an insanely good summon, but it entirely depends on how you yourself are playing and how you want the fight to go. Second to last then, also in the S plus tier, we have Black Knife Tish. This is quite a well-known one as well. She is incredibly acrobatic, which allows her to dodge most enemy attacks. So while she isn't tanky per se, she can still survive quite a long time in a fight, and her damage is just insane. She uses the Black Knife weapon itself, so she deals health percentage damage whenever she uses the Ash of War, as well as lowering your enemy's max health every time that it happens for a short period of time. This is a summon that gets better and better the stronger that your enemy is, and that is an invaluable asset to have. Then finally today we have the Dung Eater Puppet Summon. You know how I said the Mimic tier was essentially a clone of a player? Well this might as well be another player as well. It has massive stats all around, it does loads of damage to nearly anything, it has no particularly notable weaknesses, and it is tanky as hell while also grabbing good aggro. It is probably the single best all-rounder summon that there is, not much unique going on, but incredible at every single thing that it tries to do. 
do and everything that you will ask it to do for you. And that will just about do it everyone. A tier list of a nice big group of the best Spirit Ash summons available in Elden Ring, up to date for patch 1.06. What do you think about the summons that I chose and where I placed them? Would your personal experiences have them in any other order? Are there any particularly strong ones that you think are worth mentioning that I didn't include on this list? Feel free to let me know in the comments and spread the word to your fellow Tarnished, and of course, let people know what builds you were using that can make them go absolutely nuts as well. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye